welcome to Italy. Welcome to Varese. Varese. That sound legit to you? Yeah, I'm as surprised as you are that I'm here, but I am so, so happy to be here. What have I been doing whilst I've been in Italy for the two days that I am here? I've been riding some MV Agustas. We got invited, or at least Rob got invited, and I've just rode off his coattails. Um, to the MV Agusta factory to take out two of their newest bikes. Those are the MV Agusta Brutale 1000RS, which is new for this year, and the F3RR. So these are pretty alien to me. If I've ever been on anything like this in the past, it certainly isn't on as good roads as we have here. So if you're looking for a very detailed critique, then unfortunately I'm gonna say I'm not the guy to do it. I think to get the most out of these engines, out of these two bikes, you definitely need to take them on a track. You just cannot do it on the roads. We've tried our very best to get there, but you just need to stretch their legs and get them on a track so you can get them up to full speed. I don't think I've ever been on a twistier road. Someone's hit that at speed, good. <laughs> Let's explain the specifications of the Brutale 1000. Starting with the motor, we have a four cylinder 998cc motor on this. You have six gears of which you will probably only ever need three. You have countless rider aids and a few different modes on this one. You have traction control, you have ABS, you have lean sensitive, ABS, you have wheelie control. The brains of that at least are handled by Continental. Luckily, haven't had to use it today, but it's nice and reassuring to know that it is there. You've got a few different customizable settings on this, more than a few, in fact. So if you own this bike, you will tweak those, I'm sure, and dial them in for yourself. Obviously, just take them out today. We've left them in sport, and we've enjoyed them an awful lot in sport. It has a dry weight of 186 kilograms. That motor makes, I believe, 208 horsepower at the crank, but this probably is the most powerful bike that I've sat on. I can say that with confidence. It definitely feels like the most powerful bike that I've sat on. We have 116 Newton meters, so you're playing between 11,000 and 13,000 for your peak horsepower and peak torque. And I would say from riding today, my experience is that it gets really fun, anything after about 6,000, anything 4,000 down, I found it to be hunting a little bit to even out the revs. If you're riding this thing through a town and it's almost criminal to do so, uh, it does not like being at lower speeds. So if you're sticking it in first and second and you're riding through town at 3,000 revs, you'll feel it start to hunt and try and even itself out a little bit. Now when you're doing town stuff, the throttle engagement is a little bit abrupt, but actually when you get out onto the higher speed, more sweepy bends, sweepy roads, uh, yeah, again, that measures itself out. Should it surprise me that this bike is more comfortable at higher speeds? No, no it shouldn't. Look at it. For a four cylinder though, and my experience of them is that you have to keep them singing to make the most power and to make them fun. This being a big four cylinder makes a lot of power down low. So it feels really tractable, even down low in the revs. And you don't really have to work it that hard if you don't want to. If you obviously want to keep it in the upper reaches, then you can, and you'll get the most out of it, but it doesn't feel lacking by any standards when you're down low. <laughs> that auto blipper works nicely, sounds great. The other thing that you will notice is the astonishingly good sounding exhaust note to this, I believe, they are stock, and it's weird to say stock, I suppose, on a bike that's around 25,000 pounds, or in that sort of region, it is an expensive bike. To call anything on this bike stock it is um, a bit of a liberty, I would say, uh, but it sounds so, so good, even with those on. You'll never need to change those, I wouldn't imagine. It has six gears, it has a top speed, I think in the reaches of about 180 miles an hour, which sounds bonkers on a naked bike. Uh, it's also got a quick shifter, which works really well. There is a bit of a knack to any quick shifter that I've found using them in the past. Uh, same is true of this one, but it does work really well. What I find they work best is just when you are accelerating on a straight road and you're really just trying to get up to speed, they punch through the gears really well. It's also got a, an auto blipper down, so you can go quick shift up or down. Pretty aggressive steering geometry on this, as you'd probably expect. The handling and the steering on this is nigh on telepathic. Uh, it is like I say, really aggressive. You are very thrust forward. I say very, 
that is in relation to most of the bikes I've ridden recently uh, but comparing it to other sports bikes and I have ridden them in the past it's been a little while um, but it still feels fairly aggressive for that you are thrust slightly further forward you're cantered up a little bit in the seat seat height in case I haven't mentioned already is 845 millimeters uh, doesn't feel tall by any standards at all still very easy to get both feet on the ground and then the handlebars have got a rise to them so that's a pretty comfortable riding position it is in comparison to the F3 which is very aggressive uh, but it is a very comfortable position even an hour sat in the saddle doesn't feel too much very comfortable seat uh, I don't know about the pillion seat it's quite small but it looks relatively comfortable if it's made out of the same material as the rider seat then it still will be comfortable very high foot pegs for your passenger though so their knees will be in their armpits uh, but no seriously sat on this riding it it feels really really comfortable a little bit of vibiness definitely not the worst that i felt and it's around 6,000 revs i think you get a bit of feedback through the pegs and through the bars actually less through the bars sorry i will take that back more through your crotch uh, it does give you a, a really delectable ball tingle when you're at 6,000 revs at lower speed. All of these things get better at higher speeds though. So one of the things that probably shouldn't be surprising about this is that it becomes much smoother and it feels happier when it is playing at higher speeds. That shouldn't be a surprise to anyone with a bike that can get up to about 180 miles an hour. And as a 0 to 60 of 3.15 seconds, any brand that lists their 0 to 60 is very proud of it and you shouldn't expect anything different from MV Agusta. They make some very sporty bikes. Uh, 3.15 seconds, I'm never really gonna see. Unless, of course, I use the launch control, which we haven't used today. I would go into it with a healthy dose of respect, <laughs> having never used it before, but that does work really well. It's got all the rider aids to make that perfect. In fact, I believe what you do is basically pin the throttle, pull the clutch in, and then let it go quickly and it will take care of everything for you and get you up to that 0 to 60 time for braking you have four piston brembos at the front you have a two piston brembo at the rear you have 320 mil discs on the front and a 220 mil disc on the rear obviously the braking on this is more than adequate suspension is firm but not jarring you have marzocchi fully adjustable forks on the front and you have a sax rear shock again fully adjustable both do a really good job of taking care of bumps and keeping this thing stable we've been on some fairly rough surfaces there are occasional little patches where the tarmac isn't quite as consistent and it still handles that stuff really really well definitely out of this and the f3 in terms of handling this one i've gotten on with a little bit more just because it takes longer for me to get into the mindset of a sports bike where you are so far over those bars so lent forward and so much weight could be on your wrist you need to sort of warm up into that it's very responsive on the front to stop it from getting flighty obviously it has a steering damper as well any bike with this much power any performance bike like this probably needs that in fact definitely needs that as standard you'll see them on all sports bikes nowadays so that is a useful addition having never ridden the r to compare it to this one uh, from what i believe it is a more aggressive riding position probably not a comfort for all day riding position on the rr it's got carbon fiber all over it it has lighter wheels as well and it has semi-active suspension there are probably other differences as well but that's broadly speaking the main couple and whilst it is a fancier bike and if you're going to take it more for track use that probably would be the one to choose i think it was my money not just for the fact that it is slightly cheaper i probably would go with this one if i was using it on domestic roads with occasional track use hopefully more than occasional track use because it really comes to life when it is at speed so the question i i don't think i need to answer for you is will i buy this bike the answer is no i don't have enough money but would i buy this bike if i had enough money absolutely it is really really fun you don't see an awful lot of these either so if you want bragging rights and you want people to come over and admire your ride then how much better can you do than something like this speaking on behalf of myself and i hope rob we have had a fantastic time at the mv Augusta factory they've been so welcoming so generous of their time so generous of their toys and it's been a fantastic trip Here's looking forward to the next one. See you soon. Oh, and if you haven't subscribed already, what are you doing? Subscribe. You know, it's free. Bye. If you can wheelie it as well, I'd be really impressed. No way, man. Whoa. Yeah, man.
That's more your sort of horsepower level, isn't it? Yeah, definitely for today. <laughs> That's really fun. I love the colour. Yeah. So, uh, Super Veloce scooter.